side, on the energy side, we are two. We shape the future of clean energy working with 400 energy companies in 40 countries. But we do speak the truth about power to people in power, and you are all people in power. So let's speak the truth. So if you have to take one thing away from this, and not going against Michael or Christian, Christian brought you up like amazing, grit for speed, so many billion dollar investments. And Michael, so much electrification. I'm going to bring you down on, uh, we got to do the grid for speed at the speed of price is right. Uh, price means the cost of energy. Cost of energy means the energy bill that people have to pay. That will have to be right. That depends what the speed is. And the one thing, maybe a new thing you take away from this is, so what we are saying is two months in November, November, December 2022, two months have changed this transition. It has made it a transformation. It has made it a transformation that is so critical for us to get right. So what happened in those two months? Three things. One, the unfortunate event in Ukraine. Lights were on in Europe in December of 20. That's great. Kudos to all of you. Price wasn't right. Same December, you go on the other side of the pond in Texas. Actually, if you look at what happened, we lost power, lights were off on Christmas Eve. That's extreme weather. And then another thing happened in November 2022. That, I think, will have the most profound impact in this energy transition, starting in the U.S., which started six, seven months ago, we saw it, and it's going to come to Europe. W what is that? What happened in November 2022 that you think will change the world, change this transformation in a way that we haven't even thought through? Shout out. You can shout out. Chat GPT. We are trying to create consciousness using electricity, a whole lot of electricity. And so I'm going to give you a little bit of sense on what's that demand. You heard EV, you heard heat pump, you heard the industrial side. I'm going to talk about the AI race is on. And the AI race has changed to powering the AI race. The country, the entity that will be able to power the huge demand it takes to create a brain. I call it create a brain. This is not your old AI. This is not machine learning. This is not analytics. This is trying to create consciousness. We're way away from there. And what is, that has done that November 2022, we didn't even know the name of the company, OpenAI. <coughs> so I'll just give you one example. And I can give you 100 examples like this that came about in the US in just last three months. I would say three months when everybody was doing their planning, 2030 forecast. So this is the forecast in Texas, ARCOT. Texas is going to create a Germany in Texas. What does that mean? That means in the next six months, their demand will go up equal to the demand of Germany. So they're adding Germany to Texas. They're going to almost double their demand. And Texas is a big state. It's like a Germany. And you go from south Georgia Power, you go to Arizona Public Service, you go on the west to Portland, this is happening everywhere. You have all heard, five gigawatt is what Microsoft is looking for in one campus, 5,000 megawatt. You know how much that is? That is one fourth the size of Greece. That's what 5,000 megawatt is. So the AI race has really now become powering the AI race. It started in the US six months ago. It's gonna come to Europe if you Google, you'll find Google is creating a $1.2 billion data center in Finland. They just announced it two weeks ago. And we look at this, data center is not new. We've been doing it for, we call it three phases. Phase one was when human, we figured out we love our dogs and cats, and we want to post 100 million pictures every day. That was phase one. That was Facebook. That was all the social media. Phase two was productivity. We're going to go to the cloud, migrate to the cloud, and Internet of Things. That's phase two. That phase two is still happening. 
Now we have another wave that started beyond cryptocurrency. It's the wave of, I call it, we're training a brain and we're trying to use the brain to ask questions and answer questions. And you know what phase we are in right now? I call it, we haven't even finished half a mile of a marathon. That's how early we are on. I call it, we're in 1984 when Steve Jobs came up with a desktop called Lisa, his daughter's name. I had five megabyte of hard drive. You can buy five terabyte, I think, in Amazon right now. And the projections are all over the place. But it is real, it's happening. It is an era of, we are starting a steam engine era. The impact of an artificial brain will be profound across every aspect of economy. <clears throat> it will impact us. You may not even see it. It may have a negative impact on electrification. Why? We were already constrained on supply chain. Now you're talking about companies, Microsoft, $3.2 trillion market cap. You take all the large utilities in US and Europe, add them up, that still doesn't get to the market cap of Microsoft. They have very deep pockets. Microsoft, Google, Apple, Meta, Amazon. Nvidia released their earnings yesterday. 2.3 trillion company. They were selling video games for my kids, the gamers, five years ago. And they have deep pockets. They're going to get, if you think you were short on big transformers, if you think you were short on switch gears, circuit breakers, you will not even see what will happen in the next nine months, 12 months, 15 months with the amount of data center. You're talking about 500 kV line going to data centers. You're talking about 500 megawatt data centers. You're talking about gigawatt data centers. These are real. These are not just, yeah, there's a lot of duplication. One broker is asking data center in three different places, but this is real. This demand wasn't there six months ago. You wanna take another check on that? Go and look at the, you can open your phone. Look at the stock price of three companies. Constellation, Vistra, Talon. What's common? They're all IPPs. What's common? They all operate nuclear power plants. So all these data centers are trying to grab as many nuclear power plants as they can to co-locate. And they're doing bilateral contracts at 80 to $100 a megawatt hour when market is at $25 a megawatt hour. Look at the stock price of Vistra, 237% up in nine months, more than Nvidia. Supply, you kind of know what's happening in the supply. Yeah, we're going gangbusters on wind and solar, but one thing hasn't changed. Germany went gangbusters from 2002. Texas went gangbusters in 2019. Hasn't changed in Germany, hasn't changed in Texas. Look at the blue line. The yellow line is how much wind and solar is growing in Texas, 60 gigawatt. Look at the blue line. What is the blue line? The blue line is the minimum hourly wind and solar total that you're getting. Your minimum is not changing, that's not going up. You still need to balance. You add 60 gigawatt, you still need to keep 60 gigawatt of something that's there when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine. And it's gas, it's gas in US, it's gas in Europe. That's what we're doing. We're installing batteries. End of this year, 35 gigawatt, depending on Bloomberg or EPRI or McKenzie, by the end of this decade, US may have 150 gigawatt of battery. That ain't gonna do it though. Because what we are already seeing is, by the way, officially, the duck is dead. It's not dead because we flattened it. It's dead because we made the duck a canyon. So there's a LinkedIn post, if you go to EPRI LinkedIn, I think last year, we said, this was a real curve in California during April month. It's got so deep, it doesn't look like a duck. It looks like a canyon. Look at the peak, 70 gigawatt peak. Look at the slope, 10 to 20 gigawatt per hour. This is where first disagreement, cannot be just battery. Cannot be just battery, has to be load flexibility. The grid has to enable load flexibility because battery is another investment that you would be making that will increase the cost. Load flexibility is investing in grid, but enabling load flexibility, and you're actually putting money back in the customer's pocket. So that's one of the area that you will do it. And weather, I can, I mean, you can talk about weather all the time. All I will show it is, it is imperative for us to see if we can get to 1.5, because the more you go, 
the more this is what's going to happen. Big change, wildfire. Wildfire has changed the balance sheet of US utilities. It will in Europe as well. Just like electrification, we'll be using two, three times more electrification. The areas that were not prone to wildfire, that will grow two to three times. More areas that you didn't think there will be wildfire. Just a couple of months ago, Excel Energy in Texas. You heard about pg and you heard about Southern California Edison. You heard about Hawaii. We have to design the grid now with wildfire in mind, and we have to be very careful to make sure we are doing the analysis. Just saying wildfire doesn't happen in my service area is not a good answer. It has to be a full insurance company. Look at what is happening to the insurance rates on, in flood for wildfire, and it's going to happen in Europe as well. So I'm bringing you down. I want to bring you back, get you up, Quick, quickly get you up. So all these changes are causing light to flicker. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows about extreme weather. You heard it. We heard it. But we are hearing now about blue sky. Blue sky is just like this. That's a blue sky. April, September, months that are great months. Load is not high. We're having challenges in blue sky weather. Alberta, April 2024. Just a normal day. Just the wind doesn't blow. The wind, the red is how much wind you were expecting, and that 6% is how much you got. You tried to jumpstart a 250, 350 megawatt combined cycle. Didn't have the ramp rate that it could, and it tripped. So you had to shed load in April. So now we are seeing system emergencies in April, system emergencies in September, when we take scheduled maintenance outage. And it's happening, this is real. This is not made up numbers. So there's an urgency to bring new technologies. It cannot be just wind and solar and storage, lithium ion. That's what we got right now on the left. On the right, we got a whole bunch of stuff that are not there, that have not been deployed at scale. That is not, we have some first movers and second movers. It took us 20, 30 years to get coal and gas and nuclear to go from first of a kind to nth of a kind. But all those technologies, and this is where I'm going to bring you up, this is where, Christian, you come in. Significant grid expansion, but I will say do it differently. Act differently, think differently. Don't do it like the way we have done it in the past. And we're saying to our U.S. utilities, too, you have to do it differently. What's the difference? You've got to do poles, you've got to do wires, you've got to do transformers, you've got to do circuit breakers, you've got to do all the stuff that we do. But you've got to do more of that blue thing. The blue thing is you got to bring in advanced technology, so utilize the system that you got today more and utilize the system that you will build tomorrow more. 10 to 15% of the grid is built to supply demand for 1% of the time, 87 hours in a year. We got to change that. There's many ways to do it. There's many tools in the toolbox. We keep on hearing in the US, oh, Europe is already doing dynamic line rating. No, you're not. You're doing mostly augmented you're just using ambient temperature. It's ambient adjusted rating. Advanced conductors. Doesn't have to be carbon core. If you look at ACSS, that's much better than ACSR. Power flow controllers. A ubiquitous communication system that enables load flexibility. So this is where the glue for making this doing it right is not all those new supply side. It's the demand and in the middle is where you belong. That's where the grid for speed is. It's the integrated grid. You'll invest more on communication than maybe on even normal things. Because if you do that right, this is where we come in. This is where the price has to be right. So bring it all together, the last point. Price has to be right. If you do it right, if you enable load flexibility, if you enable electrification for people who cannot afford to have a charger in their home, may not have a home, then their energy, this is the concept we say, energy wallet. What is an energy wallet? It's your wallet, maybe purse. It's how much money you're taking out from your wallet and paying to the electric company, paying to the gas company, and when you take your car to the gas station, you fill up your car. That's where your money is going out. We all have to make a promise that this transition, we will actually reduce the amount of money that's going out from the pocket when this transition is done. And electrification is the only way you can reduce the money that is going out from their wallet. And not only that, we may add some money on their wallet. And just take a look at US example. Average family of four, $38,000 annual income. 
their energy cost, electric bill, natural gas bill, filling up their car in the you know, gas station, annual $4,500. And a $1,000 repair bill, maintenance bill, change the brake, brake shoe, change your oil in the car. That's energy wallet. You do it the right way, you help them to electrify transportation. Now, in the US, we drive a lot of cars. Europe, the numbers may be different. But you should have those numbers. You should have those numbers for every country. So your energy cost savings through electrification will be, you're going to take that 4500 and you can bring it down to $3,000. Every study that has been done have shown that EV reduces your maintenance cost. Yes, you will have to change your tires a bit more frequently because you got a heavy battery. But overall, it reduces the maintenance cost. So you're reducing how much money is coming out of my wallet, but you're adding. Because if you're going to use my water heater or boiler, or if you're going to use the heat pump as a flexible resource, remember that steep curve? Remember that canyon? Well, you got to pay me money. And a very reasonable estimate is you'll be making $300, $400, $500 a year. And that's really at the end what will take us there. So don't worry, we'll get the electrification done. Don't worry, we'll get the grid built. But to do it right, we really have to act and think differently. And we don't even know what this using electricity to create consciousness means. We are too early. Whatever I'm saying is going to be wrong in six months. But it will come to Europe as well. And then this will be a transformation for you as well. So let's. Uh, Let's figure out now, um, not too much of a debate, but a slight debate. <laughs> Alshan, thank you. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.